guys welcome back to my channel for today's video we are doing my well continuation of my eyeshadow palette collection series i'm gonna try to do everything in one video it's probably gonna be long so strap in but just to give you a visual this is why i'm doing this because this is not even the worst of the drawers but this is what's happening now because I ran out of room to like put my palettes nicely. So I just been like piling them up and now I can't even see like what's in here. So I'm going to take them all out of the drawer and organize them by brand and show you inside every palette. So that's why it's going to be long. And if I have things to like say or like quick reviews, I might do that too. Uh, I'm going to start with the palettes that I only have one of, and yeah, we'll just jump right in. Okay, we're back on my horrible craft table, <laughs> so just ignore that again. But I have a bunch of stacks here, and like I said, we're starting with the palettes from brands that I have only one of. And there's still a lot, so uh, I'm just going to get these out of the way because these are in my chopping block series right now. So the first one is from the brand Pure Cosmetics, P-U-R-E. This is the Buff Collection, and this is a dupe of the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. So this one is in my chopping block series because I don't remember... Well, actually I do remember liking the formula, but I don't know if I need this in my collection because I don't even know where you would get this palette and the Naked 3 palette is like long discontinued. So I don't know if it's relevant anymore, but if I do end up really liking it, then I'll keep it. But yeah, this is the Buff Collection palette. It even is like a dupe down to the packaging and the brush and the palette. So I don't really like dupe brands like that, but I'll give it a shot. And I got in a boxy charm, which is why I even have this in the first place. Another one in my chopping block series is the Laura Lee Los Angeles Party Animal palette. This one is pretty unique. Well, I used to think it was, but maybe now that I'm going through all my palettes, I'll find that it's not. But it's very like neon colors, which I didn't have at the time that I got this palette, but I haven't heard good things about the formula. I think she reformulated since, like this was one of her first palettes ever. So yeah, it's just another one I need to try. The Kylie Cosmetics burgundy palette i've said this several times the namesake of this palette the burgundy shade is like the worst shade in the palette but i'll try it again to see how i feel but again another brand like i don't need in my collection because this is like her old formula her old branding you know so yeah there's that and this one from Studio Makeup on the Go, uh, another BoxyCharm palette. This one has a really good formula. It's more the color story that I don't think I need. It's another one of those like cool tone leaning like purple color stories, which I'm not even sure if I like on my eyes. Like I just have to use it more, which I'm going to be saying a lot <laughs> in this video, but yeah. This is the Studio Makeup on the Go. Do these have names? I guess not. That's just what it's called. <laughs> Those are my chopping block palettes. So we'll move on to the other stack. So this first one was in my new makeup drawer. It's from Mally Beauty, I guess. It's called the Best Dressed Lids, Neutrals and Bolds, 14 Matte and Shimmer Eyeshadows. This one I'm keeping in the box because, like I said, it's in my new makeup drawer. And I just like to remember which of my palettes are the newest, but it looks like this. And those are the shades. 
And yes, I said in my new makeup drawer video that this reminds me of the ABH Nouveau palette, but has more shades. Like if you took these two shades away, it's basically <laughs> the ABH Nouveau. I don't know if they did that on purpose. I don't know when this eyeshadow palette was made. Um, yeah, and I don't know anything about this eyeshadow formula. So I do own a eyeshadow stick from Mali, but it's a, you know, a cream stick. Um, I did really like that. So hopefully I'll like this. Then I have the Wander Beauty Sweet Escape palette. This one is beautiful. When I opened this from BoxyCharm, I was like surprised at how much I love the color story. Because, oh, there goes the sheet. Look how pretty that is. I love these like lavender shades right now. And I did say in that Again, I'm gonna keep referring back to the new makeup drawer video. I'll try to link it below. But I said in that video, like, oh, I was glad I had this so I didn't have to try the, the Lawless Lavender Palette because that one looked really pretty. And anyway, I've since heard the formula is not great. So we'll see about this one. Um, I don't really know anything about the Wander Beauty eyeshadow formula. Like I haven't heard anyone talk about it before, but this color story really speaks to me. And I have this palette from Jaclyn because I found it at Winners and I really just wanted to see if it was any good and the color story spoke to me. Um, this is the Strawberry Fields palette. Not necessarily supporting this brand, but I was just curious and I got it at a really good deal. <laughs> so that's the story with that one. Um, and then I have this super old Kat Von D. Yes, it says Kat Von D. It's not KVD Beauty <laughs> at the time that I got this. That's how old it is. This was the Shade and Light Eye Palette or Eye Contour Palette. And this was getting so much hype when I first started watching beauty YouTube. And it's so boring <laughs> now that I look at it. But I feel like there could be a use for this palette. I'm just not somebody that really just wants to do basic all matte eyeshadow looks. Like if I'm gonna wear eyeshadow, I want it to be sparkly and like fun. So I don't know how long this will stay in my collection. I might actually, I've considered selling this palette because it's in really good condition and I'm pretty sure I've worn it like twice in my entire life of having this. So if anyone else would really like to have this palette, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll try it again and see how I feel because it's also really old so I don't know if people want to buy a super old palette <laughs> but it was really like expensive for me at the time to get this and then I haven't used it so it kind of is disappointing but anyway there's that one um this next stack here so I have a ace beauté or I have to remember to say it beauté I think because in French <laughs> it would be beauté but it's the scarlet dusk palette and it looks really pretty. I think I've heard Ace Beauté change their formula recently and it's like way better and I don't know if this is like the new formula but I got it in a boxy charm or my mom did and then she gave it to me. I don't remember but yeah I have to get some use on this one. I do have some Ace Bo Beauté. <laughs> Ace Beauté single eyeshadows and pots, which I really like. So yeah, I have high hopes for that one. And this is not my only Viseart palette, but you saw my mini Petit Pro in the mini eyeshadow palette video. But I also have the um, Neutral Matte eyeshadow palette. I got this for like nine dollars or something from a boxy pop-up 
And this is like a hundred dollars something palette, so that's weird. Um, I think this is their old packaging. I don't know if they even still make this, but it's like the name says, like it's just a neutral matte palette. Um, which is more, I guess has more variety than the KVD one, but yeah, I thought I was going to use this a lot, but then it's just been sitting in my collection. So another one I have to pull into a project or something. And then I was surprised that I only have one Makeup by Mario palette, <laughs> but it's the Ethereal Eyes palette. I still haven't removed the sticker on the mirror, which works well for filming, but anyway. Um, I did use this in a video and I liked it, but I need to use it some more. Um, it's really pretty. I like the shades and these like sparkly shades are very like the name ethereal really goes well for them because they're very like, I don't know, like the sparkles like dispersed on the eye, but it reflects nicely in the light. Yeah. So. I have to revisit this one again. I have one eyeshadow palette from Artist Couture, the Supreme Bronze. And I bought this because it was on sale and I've heard really good things about this. I think it's just Steph here on YouTube. This is one of her favorite, if not her favorite palette, like in her collection. So I was very intrigued to try it for myself and I really like the variety of tones in this palette even though it's called Supreme Bronze. I feel like you can get a bunch of different looks with this one as opposed to the Natasha Denona bronze palette which you'll see later on. Um, but yeah, excited to try this one. This was in my new makeup drawer recently but I just took it out because it's not a new palette. and. It's just new to me, I suppose. And then I have, this is not my only MAC palette, as you know if you watched the last part of this series, but this is my only like big MAC palette. It's the In The Flesh um, palette. So it's like a pre-selected color story that you could get. I don't think you still can. It's super boring and like leaning cool tone and I don't know if I would keep this one around much longer. This should be pulled into my chopping block series. But at the beginning of my channel I was using this palette a lot because it was in my shop my stash. Um, but that was back when like I didn't have much makeup and I was just really excited that I had MAC eyeshadows. <laughs> so I don't know if I still feel the same way about this one. I'm gonna have to revisit this one again. And then my last, no, not my last stack, but the next stack. I have one palette from Lunar Beauty, the Nude Prism palette. I love this palette. This is in my uh, Pando's eyeshadows project for this shade, which is kind of obvious because it's the one that's all like oily around because <laughs> I smushed into it so much. Um, but yeah, I love the layout of this palette. The first row and the last row are all mattes and then the middle row is like very shiny, like metallic shades, which I really like and I love all the tones together. Um, yeah, I got this one for a very good price from Boxy charm pop-up by the way boxy charm is now ipsy but i don't know if i'll ever get used to calling it ipsy so whenever i say boxy charm <laughs> i'm talking about ipsy now um, but yeah also the packaging very cute i have this giant bulky palette from iconic london but i'm i don't know i've really been liking all the iconic london products I've tried and it looks like I've used this palette before but I honestly don't remember but a lot of these shades are like at least I swatched them I guess this is not a very unique color story to my collection so if I don't love this 
palette, I'd probably declutter it. Um, also because it's so bulky for no reason. But yeah, need to try this one. It's reminding me of like a Too Faced palette though. <laughs> so we'll see how long this one survives. I have one palette from LA Girl. I really liked this palette when I used it. I did use it, but I put the plastic back on, I suppose. But this is a really good formula. I got this from Ulta in the States. You can't get it in Canada as far as I know. I don't know where they even sell LA Girl, but wherever they do, I don't think they would sell like a big palette like this. Um, but anyway, I really like the formula of this one. It's just a, like a neutral palette again, but it's very not, I guess it's versatile. I don't really know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's just good. Um, I probably don't need it in my collection considering all the other shadows I have, but it is like a good drugstore palette. Although I, it was limited edition, so I don't even know if it's relevant. But it was called the Sun Kiss Glow, if I didn't say. And then I have one palette from Beauty Bay. It's the Nikki Tutorials palette, which I really like. There's two sides, I guess, to this palette, although it's kind of all over the place when you look at it <laughs> like this. But I have a video on this palette. This was in my Panda's Eyeshadows palette, but I vetoed it out I suppose because I pulled this shade and that is like the shade I would least wear <laughs> in this palette so it was really difficult and I'm never gonna pan that shade unless I use it as like an eyeliner for five years but that's not gonna happen but anyway formula is really nice the shimmers are beautiful and this is like a very affordable palette even for it coming to Canada I feel like the experience was good, like ordering from Beauty Bay. So they do have a lot of palettes that I'm interested in trying, but I just don't feel like I need them right now. <laughs> Next I have a Maybelline palette, the Nudes of New York. I really like this palette. Um, Maybelline is not that affordable, I feel like, in Canada. Like, it's getting really up there in the price, but the formula of this one is nice. And it's kind of like you get two palettes in one. Like, this side is more, like, purpley tone, and then this side's more bronze. And, yeah, I remember really liking the formula of this, so I have this one. I have this palette from... Clara Cosmetics. I bought this at Winners. Um, it's the number one pro palette because the color story is beautiful. It's a very fall themed palette in my opinion. And because I used to watch Drea, I forgot her name, Drea something on YouTube. She used to be one of my favorite YouTubers and unfortunately she doesn't make videos anymore but she was raving about these palettes that she found at Winners because she's also from Canada and so I saw one and I had to get it and yeah I need to use this one in the fall more oh and then I have another palette from Butter London I, you did see I have the I think it's called the Natural Goddess palette in my mini makeup, no, in my mini palette drawer. But I also have the Teddy Boy palette, which is like, I feel a fun spin on a neutral cool tone palette because it has like a pop of like bluish purple. But I don't know, I have, I've never used this one. This should be also in my chopping block series at some point. I have one eyeshadow palette from Flower Beauty, the Jungle Lights palette. These are beautiful metallic shades. Um, this is not like a full palette for me. It's mostly a palette of lid shades, but I still really 
like it and I'm keeping it because it's a good formula. She did release another palette, like a more neutral color story. Um, but I don't even know where you get Flower Beauty anymore. I guess only online because I don't even think they carry it in the States at Walmart or Ulta. At least not the ones in the States that are near me. So I might pick that one up though if I ever see it. But yeah, really like the formula of this one. But again, Flower Beauty, although it's a drugstore brand, it's not very affordable in my opinion. I think that palette's like 17 or more dollars. Um, this is a palette from Crown Pro. I think I used to have another palette from Crown, but I decluttered it. This is the Glam Metals palette, and this one survived my Chopping Block series, so I still have it. It's a nice, like, grungier, neutral color story, I feel, and everything is either satin or, like, a metallic, so, but I really liked it when I used it. And it does give you like a glam, like a glam rock kind of look, I feel. So I think the naming and like the whole theme is pretty spot on. And the mirror is a guitar. <laughs> so yeah, keeping that one. And this palette was in my Pan Those Eyeshadows palette. No, my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. The Barbarella eyeshadow palette from B Beauty London. I got in a boxy charm. This is just such a big palette and I feel like it doesn't need to be that big because a lot of these shades are kind of similar but I really liked the palette when I used it and this was the shade that was in that project. As you can see it's the only one that has like a dip in it but this is actually like a duochrome like a nice flaky inner corner shadow that has like a pink shift and yeah I'm keeping this one because I feel like the formula is actually quite good okay I think somebody started mowing their lawn so I hope you don't hear that anyway I have one more stack of these um one-off palettes um, this one, well actually, you just saw in my last video, I own more than one palette from e.l.f. But this is my only like full-size palette, I guess you would say. This is the Electric Mood and Tiana Major 9 collab. And I remember really liking this when I used it. I tried it in a video. Hopefully I can remember to link all these videos below because <laughs> I don't remember what their names were. But yeah, I thought I really liked this one. I have to go back though and see um, because I haven't used it since. <laughs> um, only because I have so many palettes. But I really like the color story of this one, especially for <clears throat> for e.l.f. I feel like it's very unique. I don't really remember much else about it but I was very excited when I found this palette at Pharma Pre because in Canada we never get like the fun e.l.f. collabs but for some reason we got this whole collection so I was very happy when I found this one. Uh, then I had this giant palette from Be Perfect Cosmetics and Stacy Marie. This is the Carnival palette. I think I bought this, yes, from Beauty Bay at the same time that I bought the Nikki Tutorials palette, probably to get free shipping or something. And because I really wanted to try this, this is ginormous. It has two highlighters in it as well. I've also used this in a video and I loved it. I really loved this key, no, Queenie, yeah, Queenie shade. It looks very basic in the pan, but it's for some reason like special on the eye. But I really need to try the colorful shade some more um, because I hear that's what like you buy these palettes for from Be Perfect. They have a really good like colorful shade formula, I guess. I need to use this. <laughs> it's just so big, like. It's always in the back of the drawer because of its size, so 
yeah but if i pull it into a project or something i shouldn't have any issues because it's very as you saw you can do so many different looks with this super colorful or neutral or like monochromatic yeah so i'm excited to dip back into this one uh, then i have one palette from alamar cosmetics which i really like i got this in a boxy charm and again this shadow looks kind of like you would have it in many palettes but it's special on the eye and you're supposed to like use these shades wet and these shades can be used dry because these are like metallic shades that i guess are more um opaque when you wet them and then these are the mattes down here but i really like the colors in this palette I think they changed the packaging of their palettes. I don't know if they reformulated it. I hope they didn't because this one was really good. Then I have my Vive palette, which doesn't get enough love, I feel. Because um, this was in my last shot, my stash, and I think I did not reach for it. Or I reached for it one time, maybe. But I love the colors. I love these, like, grungier matte shades um the shimmers are not my favorite in this palette they're more like a dry formula and i like shimmers that you can use with a brush and that like pick up well so yeah but i'll go back to this one eventually because it's like a super wearable palette i don't know why i didn't reach for it more but yeah i have this one which came all the way from Spain <laughs> and it really bugs me that the corner got smushed but yeah because I ordered this from Cult Beauty then I have one Zoeva palette the Caramel Melange palette from BoxyCharm this has never been used it looks kind of boring now that I look at it but I still like to try it out I mean it's a wearable color story these are all matte shades here yeah and then this looks to be like a matte with sparkle and these are like shimmery so i don't know we'll see about this one maybe that should go in my chopping block series then I have this palette from Item Beauty, which is newer in my collection, but this brand doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> so I don't even know if I should keep this. Maybe I should sell it because it's still like in the box and I haven't even like peeled this tab. But anyway, I'll show it to you. I'm trying to open this without destroying it. Mm, I think I just did. It looks like this and that's the colors. Actually, this looks very similar <laughs> to the Zoeva palette, doesn't it? Oh my god, look at this. Yeah, so like same kind of color story, but the formula looks very different in the item beauty palette in person because these shimmers look like they're more like that flaky very shiny formula so i'm kind of intrigued to try this but i'm never gonna like talk about it in a video because you can't even get this brand anymore <laughs> so i don't know about that but i did just rip the box too so I guess I'm keeping it now. <laughs> and the last palette is another palette that survived my chopping block. The BoxyCharm Hello Charmer palette. I don't know who they worked with to make this palette because BoxyCharm doesn't make their own makeup usually. But this one's pretty good. I really liked it. Which is why it's still in my collection. So yeah. That was everything for my... Well... That was just the palettes that I own only one of. From a brand that I own only one of, if that makes sense. I still have so much more to show you. But um, I'm going to organize the rest by brand. Because that's how I want to put them back in my drawers. 
So, yes, let me get those palettes out. Okay. Um, I guess we're going maybe in alphabetical order or maybe just whatever I see with my eye first. But this is my ABH palette collection. And I think this is officially the brand I own the most eyeshadow from. Um, we'll have to keep count. But look how pretty it looks when it's all together. See, this is how I want it to be in my drawer. But anyway, we'll move this aside and we'll start with these Norvina palettes because I guess this is like a sub brand of ABH. But the first one I got was the um, Volume 1, the Pro Pigment Palette Volume 1. I bought this when it first launched because it launched during one of the Sephora VIB sales and that's how I impulse purchase, purchased it I suppose because this is a giant palette that I probably didn't need um, because I don't like play with a lot of these shades down here um, but I do like the top part of this palette I'm just not like a makeup artist obviously or somebody that you know, experiments very much with their eyeshadow, which I think is what you're supposed to do with the primary shades in this palette. But I have used this one time and it was for a Halloween look. So <laughs> it didn't give me a good like picture of what this palette can do because I was being like a skeleton lady or something. <laughs> so I use like the black and the reds. But yeah, I need to use this again. Um, yeah, a lot of mattes in here and very like deep shades, so we'll see. But there is a white which you could use to lighten things. Um, <clears throat> so even though I haven't used this one very much, for some reason I felt the need to buy the um, volume 5. This I think is her most like mainstream kind of color story if you know what I mean by that because um, a lot of these pro palettes are very vibrant and colorful by the way you can probably find them at TJ Maxx or Winners now because I have seen them there I haven't seen this one because this is the newest right the newest one in the collection um, if I would have waited to buy just one of the pro palettes I would have bought only this one because this is more um, wearable for me I feel because a lot of it it's more it's like a neutral palette with purples I guess you would say um, I haven't touched this one I haven't swatched it or anything but I have high hopes for it <laughs> so we'll have to pull this into some kind of project so then I have like the rest of these are just traditional Anastasia, Beverly Hills. <laughs> um, I don't even know where to begin, but I guess I'll move this out of the way. Um, this one, the Rose Metals, this used to be my newest ABH palette, but you'll soon see I have a newer one. And I showed this in my new makeup video. Um, my new makeup drawer, I'm pretty sure. Did I? Anyway, I did put it away, but I kept it in the box to remind myself that I've never used it. Um, it's the one that looks like this. And those are the shades. I have heard really good things about this palette. I just haven't had a chance to get to it yet, as you can imagine. So gonna put that back in the box for now. Then I have the ABH Nouveau palette and this palette kind of like revitalized ABH I feel because <laughs> everyone was like so over those big Norvina um, pro palettes and then they came back with this one which is more like something they used to make. Um, I love the colors in here. I don't feel like it's super unique anymore um, considering like everything we just saw but 
I still am very happy to have this one. I love the packaging of this one. It's kind of like a, like a tweed fabric. I don't know. They should do this more if they do more palettes like that. Um, this one, the Master Palette by Mario. This is very old now, but it's in my Pando's Eyeshadows project. I am working on this shade, right? Muse? Yeah. I'm working on the shade Muse. This is a good palette to try and pan, I feel, because it's very soft and smushy. Like, this has a huge dip in it, even though I haven't even used it five times yet. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is like a collector's item for me. I don't think I'll ever get rid of this unless it grows like mold or something, but I just love it. And it reminds me of like the time when I first discovered beauty YouTube and got super obsessed and had to have everything that people were raving about and this was one of them <laughs> and I was very excited to get it and I bought it in Vegas so it has like special memories as well. A lot of the makeup that I like is very special to me it's because I've bought during a trip or something so <laughs> yeah something I've noticed just filming this video. Um, then I have the Sultry palette. Not my favorite packaging. It's like rough, but the glitter doesn't come off, so that's good, I guess. Um, and not my favorite palette from ABH. I guess the tones aren't that n aren't as flattering on me, I guess. I'll say it like that. Um, they're very cool tone neutrals, if that makes sense. <laughs> This was in a project. Oh, right. This was in my pen, those eyeshadows for this shade Dystopian, and I hate that shade. <laughs> so I think that's what soured me on this palette as well. That shade is so, like, dry and patchy, so it only ended up working in my brows for me. So, yeah. If you have this palette and you feel the same, try just use that as a brow powder. It works super well because it's so dry. <laughs> but yeah, I have this one. Uh, this palette needs to be like lint rolled. I don't know if you can see on camera how like dusty and uh, I don't know because it's that like velvet packaging, but this is the Prism palette. This was a holiday release. Um, which I guess you can tell a bit. It's more like a jewel tone palette, I suppose. I have to revisit this one. This one, I could see it going in my Chopping Block series. I'm not like a collector of ABH, by the way. If you're, <laughs> It might seem like I just buy everything they make, but I only tend to buy things when I hear good things about it, and I'm not like concerned about getting rid of things that don't work for me. So yeah, this one could be in a chopping block because I never reach for it. I honestly forgot about it. And if I remember correctly, this like shade that looks fun is not very pigmented at all. So yeah, more to come on this one. Uh, then I have the original <laughs> Modern Renaissance. I bought this at the same time that I bought the Mario palette, I'm pretty sure. Um, this was like all the rage when I first started watching YouTube, so I had to have it, of course. And this was in a previous um, panning project of mine. Not necessarily because I thought I would pan it, but I just needed to use it more because this is one of the oldest palettes in my collection. So yeah, I'm just trying to use it um, to get some use on it before it expires or something. It's probably already expired, <laughs> but I don't know. It still works. I tried to use every shade in this palette. I think I have. Yeah, it looks like everything has been used. Maybe not Love Letter, but yeah, this could be getting pulled back into a project, um, just to use it some more. Then I have one of my favorite ABH palettes, the Jackie Ina collab. It looks like this. I love the 
the shades in this palette. It's very versatile. You can do different looks with it. The formula is one of their best and yeah, never gonna get rid of this one. <laughs> then I have the infamous Subculture palette. I did buy this around when it first came out, but I think I was lucky enough to get the reformulated version because the back has like a very minimal ingredient list. And from what I remember, I don't know if this is like a beauty conspiracy, but people were saying like the one with the long list of ingredients was like the original super bad formula. I don't know, but I didn't have a bad experience with this either way. I love the color story of this palette. Every time I open this, it's like, I don't know. I just love all the shades next to each other and it's just very up my alley. Cause it's more like neutrals, but grungy, I guess. So this is more like a fall palette for me, but yeah, need to use this some more again. Uh, then I have the Carly Bible collab. This is, I feel, not most people's favorite ABH palette, um, but I really like the color story. And again, I haven't used this one enough. I think when I used it, I used the mattes, and I didn't even like touch the fun shimmer shades yet. So again, another palette I need to use more, but maybe this could be in my chopping block series as well this palette the emery z that rough formula um it's that rough like glitter packaging that i don't love but the color story is beautiful and i love how it's like all shimmers and then mattes together um i've never used this palette though and every time I open this, I'm like, why have I never used you? And then I just put it back and I don't use it some more. So I don't know what's up with that, but it's in my inventory, so it should get pulled at some point. This will be a good summer palette, actually. So I need to um, keep that in mind for my summer shop, my stash. And then my newest ABH palette. I didn't think I was going to get this. It did go in and out of my Sephora cart several times, but then I saw in my last, what used to be called Boxy Lux is now called an Ipsy Icon box, I think. I'm still very confused. But anyway, they did a, like a collab, I guess, with ABH. So you could choose or like get in your box several ABH products and I chose this one because like I said I always kind of wanted it but then I didn't want to pay full price um, but it's the palette that has the blush shades so these two are blushes and I guess I like I didn't pull the trigger because it's not a very unique color story but when it was a choice for my box <laughs> I was like, yes, add that in. So now I have this one. Um, yeah, I'm excited. This is the Primrose palette, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that, but I'm happy I have this now. So that was my ABH collection. Let's move on to whatever I see next. Okay, I've decided we are going to go in alphabetical order because <laughs> I'm using my Tiny Decisions app to make sure that all of these palettes are in my inventory and it's sorted by alphabetical order. So anyway, let's move on to BH Cosmetics. I actually only have two palettes. The Royal Affair palette, which I found at Winners one day and... I decided I needed it. <laughs> um, I think this color story is very unique. I really like it. And I remember liking the formula of this palette. I think I used it once or twice, maybe. So definitely didn't get enough love yet. But 
I really like the colors and the formula of this palette. And then I have the Zodiac Love Signs palette, which is huge and always in the back of the drawer because of its size, but I really like this palette. Um, I've used it in a video and yeah, it's a really nice formula. It has, these are all matte shades and then the other shades are like that baked um, shimmer formula that they do pretty well. And even the highlighter is nice. So yeah, I really like the formula of the BH palettes. I know they got sold to, was it Makeup Revolution? I don't know. Some kind of brand that is not known to do well <laughs> for eyeshadow. So I don't know if the formula is still as good as it used to be. These are pretty old, but I really like these two palettes. Then I have two palettes from Beauty Bakery which I got both in BoxyCharm. So I have Proof is in the Puddin, which is very cute, but it's a very like basic browns, you know? So I don't know if I necessarily need this, but I do want to try it. Um, it's like I said, I have another palette from Beauty Bakery. So it's not like I only have one formula from them to try but this one i'm assuming it's the same formula the sour you doing eyeshadow palette but this one is more it's like leaning more warm i suppose but it's still very neutral um yeah so need to try both of those and then i have two palettes from blend bunny cosmetics which i'm very excited about I talked about these already in my last, in my, um, what's in my new makeup drawer video because these are new to me, so I won't spend too much time on them, but this is the Blend Bunny All Done Up palette. It's beautiful. Again, these like grungy tones, I just love them. They're so fun because they're like colors but they're because they're grungy they're more like wearable i feel for every day i guess so very excited to get into this one and then i have the dollhouse palette which is even bigger than that one this is how much i love the color stories of these palettes i normally don't buy big palettes like these but i had to with these ones because look at this this is like every color you could want. Again, it's colorful, but grungy colors. So I love it. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard like, this is people's favorite um, formula of eyeshadow. Some people that I watch on YouTube that are like very, you know, experienced with eyeshadow. So I think that says a lot. I did have to pay like, <laughs> kind of a lot for those to get them in Canada, but I'm hoping it's going to be worth it. Um, and then I have my ColourPop stack, which I thought was going to be way bigger. So you already saw my mini, what I call my mini ColourPop palettes. So these are like the regular size ones, I suppose. And I actually don't have that many um, compared to most people on YouTube, I guess. Because <laughs> really I only buy ColourPop collabs mostly so this first one it's so cute the sweet as can be um winnie the pooh obviously collab this they just restocked so if you are interested you can get it again it's very cute and i have a whole video on this collection i really liked everything um so that's the color story very like springtime i feel I should be using this now, but there's just only so much makeup <laughs> I can use at a time. And this is one that I keep in the box, just, I don't know why, because I like it. <laughs> then I have the Sailor Moon Pretty Guardian collab. I think this is the second time they collabed with Sailor Moon. I'm not sure, but... Um, it has one of those 
what is this called? Lenticular motion or something? I don't know. It's not really working on camera, but her mouth moves, I guess. <laughs> so it looks like this. Uh, very like neutral, but pop of pink and a yellow, I guess. But I really remember liking this when I used it. It's not very unique now that I look at it compared with everything else. But I don't see myself getting rid of this because I love Sailor Moon. So there's that. Then I have the Flirty Talk palette. Is this my newest ColourPop palette? I think so. Um, obviously it was the <laughs> Valentine's Day release last year. No, this year. Um, very pink and red, of course, but I love it. I don't know what else to say. This is a super shock shadow and it's very, very soft. Like I've only used it, I think once and it already looks like that. <laughs> so if you want to pan something easily, reach for this palette if you have it. Um, I also have the Hocus Pocus Witching Hour collab. trying to open this. <laughs> it looks like this. I love this. It's very Halloween, which is what you'd expect from a Hocus Pocus palette, I feel. I'm someone who does watch Hocus Pocus every October, so, and I grew up doing that, and yeah, so it's very, like, nostalgic to me, and I just had to have this. Um, then I have the Star Wars Mandalorian The Child palette, which I've never used. Oh, it's kind of, um, it looks a bit beat up, but it came like that. I haven't used it yet, but I'm very excited to. I just hope these shades, um, can survive. This one looks not so great. It's like puffing out of the pan. Um, so I'll have to be very gentle with it, but I love the color story. I love these like murky green tones with the neutrals. I feel like it's a very fun um, theme and obviously the packaging is very cute. I have another um, Valentine's Day eyeshadow palette. This was um, last year's palette, the one that looks like a little Valentine. And this one is not as like vibrant as the new, the flirty talk one. This was more of like a toned down version, except for the bright pink in the middle, of course. But I think they were different enough to, at least that's how I told myself why I should buy the flirty talk one. I just felt they were very different, even though they're both Valentine's Day themed. Yeah, so apparently the only time I buy non-collabs from ColourPop is when they do their Valentine's Day release, I guess. Because I also have the <clears throat> Malibu Barbie palette, which I bought recently. Um, I think this palette is still available and it's probably on sale because this is an older collab for them. But I had to have it because I love the colors. It's a very summer theme palette, as you'd expect, since it's Malibu Barbie. I'm very excited to use this. This definitely needs to get used this summer. By the way, these ColourPop palettes feel like very high quality. Now that I'm like touching everything in my collection, even though these are like more affordable, they feel really nice and like heavy and weighted and they're just cardboard palettes, so. Um, then I have the Harry Potter collab. This is in my Pando's Eyeshadows project. And yes, I'm keeping it in the box. <laughs> it looks like this, and I love it. Very versatile, I feel you can do a lot of different looks with this. I've done um, more of like an orangey, 
red look with these shades so far but I have not used this yet as it's been in my Panda's eyeshadows project so I really need to get on that I don't even know I don't even know right now which is the, the shade I'm supposed to be working on <laughs> I'll have to look at it in my Excel sheet because the way I do my Panda's eyeshadows project if you haven't seen it is I have to use each palette five times, but there's one shade in the palette that I have to use every time I use the palette. And I really don't remember which it is. Is this in my Pen's Eyeshadows palette or my Deck of Panning? I don't know anymore. It's in a project. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, yeah, definitely need to use this more, but I do have a video on this whole collection if you want to see it. Okay, I have two palettes from Ciate. These are very old in my collection. They're both the Chloe Morello collabs. The first one is um, the Pretty Fun and Fearless. This one is in my Chopping Block series because I don't feel like it's very unique to my collection and I don't remember how I like the formula. So I need to use this one to see if I'm keeping it. And I also have the Pretty Fun and Fearless Volume 2, if I can open this, um, which is more like a colorful um, color story. So this one is more unique. Not to my collection, but for Ciate, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I do only own these two palettes from them, so I can't speak much to their other palette formulas. But these are both very old. I need to use them. I have three palettes from Dominique. The first one is like a boxy charm exclusive, the Celestial Thunder palette. This is like a mini version of her, I don't remember the name of it, some kind of celestial name. Um, I remember really liking this when I used it, so yeah, it's just not very, I don't know spring <laughs> spring or summer to me this one however this is one of my favorite palettes the latte palette i just love the formula of the mattes and the shimmers they are super easy to use i can do a really nice like wearable neutral look and then there's like well really two pops of color like a deep teal and a purple um, this palette is in my Pando's Eyeshadows palette, and the shade I'm working on is this one, Espresso, and I really like it. So yeah, very happy I have this palette. And then I have the Berries and Cream palette. I think I bought this because it was on sale at Sephora, and sadly, you can no longer get Dominique Cosmetics at Sephora, at least in Canada. Um, and I did really want her new palette. So maybe if I see it at Ulta or something, or I don't even know where you get Dominique <laughs> Cosmetics. This one I've obviously never touched. It still has the plastic on top, um, but I love the colors. And if it's anything like these other two palettes in the formula, I'm sure I'm gonna like it. So just need to pull this in at some point. Um, I have two palettes from Eloise. I thought I only had this one, which is in my, I think my deck of panning project. I don't remember anymore. Yes, deck of panning, because I'm not working on any shade specific. I just have to use the palette five times, and I think I've used it twice two or three times so far. This is a more like jewel tone palette. Um, it's not my favorite because I feel like the formulas are not very consistent. Like sometimes the look really fades or muddies on my eye, but then other times I really like it. <laughs> so I'm kind of torn on this one. We'll have to see. But I do also have another palette from this brand, um, the Sahara Nights palette which I got in a boxy charm. This is an all shimmer, like neutral palette. So 
I don't know. I can see this one. It could be really good though. <laughs> so I could see this one in my chopping block series um, just to see if I like it or not. But looking at the shades, it looks like a kind of formula that I like. If you know what I mean, when you can look at a metallic shade and tell like, oh, that's gonna be really nice and like smooth and shiny. So we'll see about this one. This should be in my mini palette drawer, but it doesn't fit there, so yeah. Oh, and I forgot when I spoke about my e.l.f. Electric Mood palette. I have this giant palette from e.l.f. The 100 color palette, they release this, like, or they re-release it, I guess, every holiday, it seems. This palette is in my Panda's Eyeshadows palette for this, like, orangey shade. Right? Is it that one or that one? No, it's this one. <laughs> I think, yeah. So I have to use this palette five times. I think I've used it two times. Two or three times so far. And actually the formula on this is not bad. Like you would think a 100 color palette from e.l.f. would be just a bunch of duds because it's so affordable. But it's actually really nice. So I can't speak for every shade because I obviously haven't used every shade, but I like this one. I also have two palettes from Glamlight. They're both from the last collab they did with Michaela, the Pat 2 collab. Um, I have the 10 color palette, which has that like ABH velvet thing that's gonna get full of dust. But anyway, these shades are beautiful. I don't think I've used this. I have not used this palette, which is sad, but um, it looks really pretty. This looks, when I look at this, it looks like the formula of the Beauty Bay Nikki Tutorials palette. Like those shimmers that look very creamy. So we'll see about this one. I've heard really good things, which is why I bought this collab. And then I got because I got the whole collection, because I really shouldn't have, but I did. <laughs> I have the big palette also, which sounds scary. Um, and that one looks like this. So more greens, but also blues and purples and some neutrals. So yeah, I use this palette in the video where I did my first impressions on the collection and I use like, I think all these greens here and it came out a very bright, like turquoise look. So yeah, I still have more to use in this palette, but those are my two glam light palettes. I've been checking my winners <laughs> and Marshalls to see if I can find glam light because I saw some um, American YouTubers that I watch, they've been finding Glam Light at TJ Maxx. So I'm like, when is it coming to winners? Because I really want to try more from them. But I don't want to pay all the customs and duties because they're quite astronomical <laughs> to have Glam Light shipped to Canada, if you were wondering. Um, let's move on to my Huda Beauty collection, which is only these four. I really thought I had more. I guess I was counting my nine pan palettes from Huda as well. But as far as her like standard size, I only have four palettes. Um, they're not in order because I think this is my newest one. The Empowered palette from Huda, of course. I have not, I've yet to use this one. This is still in my new makeup drawer. It looks like this. It's not a spring summer um, color story in my opinion, which is why I guess I haven't felt the need to reach for it yet, but I'm very excited when that day comes. I don't feel like this is very unique for Huda to do like these plummy, you know, purple rosy shades, but she always does something different with her formulas, which is why I keep buying her palettes because I always want to try her innovations, I guess. This was my first Tuda Beauty palette, I believe. The New Nudes, or the New Nude 
palette. I have a video on this. I kept this in there because it's really pretty. And it looks like this. I was just looking at this concealer shade. It's not looking so great. I don't know what the like shelf life of that shade is. Um, but yeah, I really liked this palette when I used it. I think I used this for a Valentine's Day look and it came out like very deep and smoky, which I wasn't expecting, but I still really liked it. So yeah, there are pressed glitters in this palette, which I don't love, but everything else performed really nice. And I love the matte tones. I love the tones of the matte shades, I mean. Then I have the Rose Quartz palette. And this one I have never used. <laughs> Uh, but I love it. I love looking at it. It's so pretty and like ethereal. This is the one I was saying reminded me of the ColourPop Shell Shocked or whatever palette that was. Um, yeah, it's just really kind of like pastel-y but with a few deeper shades of course. So need to use this one again. Love the packaging too. And the same with the Mercury Retrograde. I think I've used it one time, once or twice, so really that's a shame because I love how this one looks too. So yeah, those are my Huda Beauty palettes. Um, then I have three palettes from Juvia's Place and these are some of the oldest palettes in my collection. I bought them all at the same time because there was like a bundle. Um, so the first one I have here is a more neutral one. This is the Nubian. It's very just like a bronzy neutral palette, but I really like the formula of this. I have to revisit these again. That's the theme of this <laughs> or the word of the day is revisit because I used to think this was a great formula, but at the time I had like only a handful of palettes, <laughs> so now I'm not sure, is this the best formula? Because I feel like people don't really talk about Juvia's Place anymore. Um, this is the Nubian 2, which is of course a more colorful um, color story. <laughs> But there is, again, some of those neutrals that I like to mix with colors. I have a video where I use the gold and the green. And I did like a gold green look way back when I first started my channel, if you want to see that. Back when I had no idea what I was doing, but it, it's really fun nonetheless. And then I have the Masquerade. This is the... Um, the full size palette. This now comes as a mini and I would recommend getting the mini if you can because you're never going to use all of this eyeshadow. These are huge pans. But I love this one because um, there's a colorful side and then a neutral side again. I'm learning that I like to mix my colors with neutrals. I know that's not revolutionary but I don't know. Just something I, I've noticed. Um, because I need like a neutral for my crease or else I feel like my whole eye becomes like a big round blob of color <laughs> if that makes sense but yeah I this one looking at this one makes me excited um, to do some more like summery looks with especially like these blues this one is more like a green blue which looks very unique actually and I forgot about it to be honest so those are my Juvia's Place palettes. Okay, moving on, I have two palettes from Lethal Cosmetics. The first one is the Teresa's Dead and Lethal Cosmetics collab, Teresa's Lethal. So this is the second collab they did. I never got the first one, but I caved when this one got released because <laughs> I really wanted to try Lethal Cosmetics or just more indie brands in general and they really got me with this one so this um I haven't used it yet <laughs> but 
I just love looking at it again. It has those more like grungy tones that I love, but mixed with like some fun pops of color. So I'm excited to use this one. And since I wanted to try more from Lethal, at the same time I bought that, I also got this um, like single eyeshadow collection. I think it's called the Hive Collection. And this is how it's presented to you like on the website, but you buy each shadow individually and then you put it in this magnetic palette. But I really love this one too. This one is more like a fall. Well, it could be a spring color story too with this like bright green and feel. I don't know. Um, but again, I haven't used it yet, so I can't even tell you if I like the Lethal Cosmetics formula. But I will keep you posted when I eventually get around to it. But those are my two Lethal Cosmetics palettes. And now we're on to Natasha Denona. <laughs> this big stack here. This first one, um, it's actually a face palette, but I'm including it because there are eyeshadows in it and this is in my eyeshadow palette inventory as well as my face palette I think so yeah there's five eyeshadows in here this this is in my deck of panning project and if you saw my last shot my stash video I was like oh I'm gonna put this away because I used it enough <laughs> No, I have not met my goal on it yet, so it's back in my shop, my stash. So yeah, need to use that a few more times at least. Then I have the Zendo palette. This palette I was never going to purchase, but I got it in a boxy charm, and I was shocked. Like a full size Natasha Denona palette in a boxy charm. It looks like this. Um, yeah. Like I said, I wouldn't have bought this one myself, so it's not like super attractive to me, but I'm sure I'll like it. I, and I could do like a neutral look with this or a more warm tone look, or I can use these greens and blues. So um, yeah, I'll have to try this one out. Then I have the My Dream palette, and I love this one. This is actually looks like a Huda Beauty <laughs> palette um, with those like purpley rosy tones but I really liked this one when I used it and there's a duochrome in this palette so on camera this is like a pink but in person it looks like almost like a green to a bronze um, yeah so I feel like it's more special and of course this was like her dream collection so obviously it's more special <laughs> to Natasha Denona herself so yeah I really like this one I also have the pastel palette this one I've only used one time I need to use it some more especially this time of year because it has those like bright pastel shades um, yeah really need to get some more use on this. I think what intimidates me is that there's so many different colors in this palette and I'm not sure which ones I should wear together probably. Like when I used it I stuck to like the greens and the mints but yeah there's so much more you can do with this palette I feel. Then we have the bronze palette. This one is beautiful. This is like screaming summer to me, or like summer nights, you know? So yeah, I just, again, need to use it some more. I don't feel like you could get many different looks with this palette because it is a very bronze theme, but you could do like a deeper, warmer bronze. And then like over here, maybe more like cool smoky bronze so yes really love this one this one's one of my favorites the sunrise palette I feel like nobody talks about this one but I love 
again the sunflowery yellow shade mixed with the more purpley tones um and i wore this on one of my birthdays and i really loved how it looked so yeah one of my favorite natasha denona palettes um then i have the retro glam palette which is still in the box because it's in my new makeup drawer. So I haven't used this one yet, but I think this is my favorite packaging that she's done. And this is what it looks like. So again, it's an extension of the mini retro palette, which I really love. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like this. I just haven't tried to do a look with it yet, obviously. So yeah more to come on this one again and then my newest palette <laughs> which i put straight into my collection and didn't even haul because it's old and i don't think you can get it anymore but one day i saw this on the sephora app and it was in the sale section so i don't know what that's about well i think it's because natasha denona is not gonna be sold at Sephora anymore at least in Canada so I'm not very happy about that because that means I don't know where I'm gonna get it um but I guess it's good if you're in America because now you can get Natasha Denona at Ulta because you guys get everything <laughs> but anyway um the gold palette I have always wanted this I've talked about this in videos how like this is like the palette that got away <laughs> But now I have it and I'm so happy because I love the colors. So this is one of her bigger palettes. So even though I got it on sale, like it was still pretty expensive because it's her, I don't know what size she calls this. It's not the giant one, but it's the one down. And then these are like the midi size ones, but I love I don't know what it is because looking at this, I mean, it's not the most unique. It's basically a brown and gold palette with two pops of like teal, but there's something about like these shades together that I just feel like I would love on my eye. And I specifically remember actually when I was talking about the Juvia's Place palette, how I did that green and gold look. I did that look based on a look that I saw that was done with this palette <laughs> and I was trying to recreate it but I obviously couldn't because the green and gold in that palette are very like traditionally green and gold whereas there's more like nuance to these shades I feel so I'm very excited to revisit that look and maybe do it now that I have the actual palette so I don't love this though, this plastic with the shade names. Like I wish they were just written like on the palette itself. But anyway, there's my prized gold palette. Okay, we're on to Odin's eye. <laughs> so I think my ABH palettes are getting a run for their money. How many of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I still think I had more ABH. <laughs> so these I'm very excited to show you because I feel like they're works of art. And I have to be honest and say I haven't used any of them yet. And I just actually ordered the new ones. <laughs> I know I broke my own rule. I have a rule that I'm not supposed to buy new eyeshadow palettes from brands that I already own but haven't used yet and I broke that because <laughs> I really wanted the new collection from Owen's Eye but anyway uh, so here are the um the Christmas themed ones the Christmas Eve palette and the Merry Christmas palette I've showed these in my new makeup drawer video because yes these are still in my new makeup drawer but it's beautiful it's a blue, purple, green, yellow <laughs> color story, and I just love looking at it. I won't spend too much time on these because I feel like I just talked about a lot of them. 
Um, and then of course the Merry Christmas palette is more like a red green color story. But I still love it very much. But it's actually only really one red in here. But I guess because it's like Christmas themed, I consider it like a very Christmas, traditionally Christmas colors, you know what I mean? But there's a variety of colors in both of those palettes. Okay, running out of stacking room. Um, then I have two of their five pan palettes. And by the way, the reason I have so much Odin's Eye is because I got a mystery box. <laughs> Um, not last year, but the year before, and there was so much in that box. If you can get your hands on an Odin's Eye mystery box and you don't already own a lot of Odin's Eye, I definitely would suggest it. It was a really good price for how much I received. But I got the, um, the Elva 2 Mini Ocean Palette. Look how cute this is. This is why I love Odin's Eye. Even in like a five pan, well technically six pan palette because the middle shade is two shades. But even in this small format, they still can do something unique, you know? I just love this brand. I love everything about it. <laughs> and I also got the Verdandi Mini Eyeshadow Palette. This one. which looks like this. And I love this middle shade in this one. This like peach and blue together just does something for me. I don't know what it is, but I'm very excited to dip, dip into these. Then I have the three um, palettes from the Perfect World collection, which you may have seen in other videos but I haven't used them on my eyes yet. <laughs> this one is in my Shop My Stash, the Flora Story palette from Makeup Just For Fun. This is like the green purple one, which is beautiful. Again, I haven't used it yet. I have the Planet Spirit palette from Betty Jean, which is the more colorful one. Probably the one I would use the least on like an everyday basis, but I'm still very excited to use these shades because they're very pretty. And I believe you can still get all of these palettes. I think they just restocked them and it's the last restock. So if you wanted them, um, go and check it out. This is the Sea Talk palette from Lauren May Beauty. I think this is my favorite one, just looking at it. But again, in real life, when I use these, it might change. But I love how she did neutrals with color. Love it. Then I have the Hela palette, or the Hela palette. I never remember how to say it. The collab with Angelica Neekvist. This one is also very beautiful. It's like a springtime dream and I should be using it right now, but I just haven't had the chance. I love pinks and greens together. So yeah, very excited about this one. And my last Odin's Eye palette for now, because <laughs> the other ones are on their way. Well, I don't even know if it's shipped yet, but they're coming. This is the Elva palette. So I guess the original Elva. And I'm pronouncing it Elva because it's an A with two dots on top. And I think you pronounce that as a E eh, and not an A, I think. It's a Swedish brand, if you didn't know, so. <laughs> this one looks like this, and I love how this looks too. It's more, I would say this is their most like neutral what I call like a mainstream palette. Um, I'm hoping I really like the formula. I've heard the Odin's Eye formula got better over time and because this is like, I think one of their first palettes, I don't know if it's that great of a formula, but I'm still excited to try it. And there's my mustard yellow that I love. <laughs> that one came in the mystery box as well. 
um, yeah, so that was my Odin's Eye collection. So moving on to the P section, I have my Pat McGrath Labs um, holiday palettes here. Um, well, let me show you this one first because it's the older one. Um, you would think I'd own one of her big, like, those palettes in the black packaging. I don't even know what they're called. Uh, but I cannot justify the price of those because I don't hear enough people raving about them for how expensive they are. But anyway, I have this one. Um, the holiday palettes are still, I mean, they're up there in price, but you get a better deal. Um, this one is the Mothership Mega, Mothership Mega Celestial Divinity. I think this was the first holiday palette, right, she released, and it's very purple uh, with a pop of green <laughs> and a gold, but, um, and I don't think I've ever used this on my eyes, to be honest, but I'm very excited about it, and I'm glad that I own it, because any chance to try Pat McGrath at a discount is good in my books. Um, so I also got last year's holiday release, the Celestial, wait, are they both called? Oh no, so that one was Celestial Divinity, this one is Celestial Nirvana. And this one was exciting because she has colors for once. <laughs> so still like the purples and the golds and the reddish tones, but now we have blue. So that's fun. <laughs> and this, um, this is actually a very interesting green. It's kind of like a blue green. I'm very excited to use it. I just have not had the chance. So yeah, those are my Pat McGrath full size palettes at least. Then I have two palettes from Patrick Ta. So I have the Major Dimension Volume 1, I guess you would call it now, and the Major Dimension Volume 2. So these palettes are super reflective. <laughs> this is the first one, so it's much more neutral browns, of course. I think I've used it once or twice, right? <laughs> oh my god, this one I definitely should be using more because it was more expensive um, and it's something like I can wear every day. It's um, yeah, very neutral, like I said, but again, just too many palettes for one person. <laughs> and the volume two is more like the rosy tones. So when these tones were all the rage, this one came out right around that time and I had to have it. And this one actually has a different formula than the first one. I feel like the um, metallic shades are like creamier in this one um, and both palettes by the way have the cream shades under the little flap which is a nice touch um, but I do find with the cream shades they can crease so yeah I don't know if it's the best idea to use them as a base it should be more something you use to like blend out or like a finishing touch which I know sounds weird because it's a cream, but that's how I saw Patrick Ta do it when he demoed, at least when I watched the demo of the first palette. So he intends to put the creams on like whenever. It's like his cream and powder blush duos. You actually put the cream on after. So yeah, um, anyway, all that to say, I'm glad I have both of these, but I have not used them enough, that's for sure. Let's move on to Pure, so P-U-R. I have a lot of Pure palettes because BoxyCharm loves to give us Pure palettes. Um, I've actually decluttered one of them, um, but I still have all of these. So, oh, and I pulled one out. Actually, two of these are in my chopping block, so let's start with those. Um, this one is just like a boxy charm collab one. Um, this was actually in my pen, those eyeshadows project for this shade Bell, and I really ended up liking the palette. Um, 
in that project at least because this shade is very nice and easy to use and blends nicely and I like the tone on my eye but I just don't know if I need this palette in my collection because the color story is pretty typical neutrals with like a purple and a blue we've seen that many many times but I do think the pure formula is pretty nice which is why I always end up keeping them but I'm also contemplating decluttering this festival palette so the one I did declutter already was the festival 2.0 but I also have the festival palette so we'll see about this one this one is neutrals with two press glitters which are very scary to use because they're the like chunky ones that don't come off the eye very easily and then you have a pink and a purple <laughs> so yeah We'll see about this one. It might not last much longer. Then I have the Pure Robbie Christie collab, which I love both sides of the color story, but I haven't reached for it yet. <laughs> but again, there's that mustard yellow shade, and I love, I don't know, I just love this side. But also the colorful side is quite fun too. And actually, there's that shade from the Pat McGrath palette that I said looked unique. It's kind of like exactly this shade, <laughs> which is the shade Garden State in this palette. Uh, yeah, if you guys saw my other videos, I complained about this palette because I was one of those people that got like their order got messed up and ugh, it was a whole thing. The website crashed. But I eventually got a refund, even though they sent me the palette. So technically I didn't pay for this, <laughs> but yeah, I need to use it. Um, this pure palette, the Midnight Masquerade, this is actually a face palette. Well, it's marketed as a face palette, but it obviously has eyeshadows in it. And this was in a project. I don't remember which one, um, but when I used it, in that project I was like wait I actually really like this like I really like everything in this palette the face products and the eyeshadows um the, the eyeshadows are just not like like I'd have to use something else if I use these shadows because there's nothing like the lightest shade is like a silver so yeah um but I really liked this palette when I used it I'm just looking at this this purple shade it looked like it had something on top but I think it's just another like the silver got into it I think <laughs> I hope um, anyway yeah really like this actually um, and I didn't think I would like it as much as I do and then I have the soiree diaries which is their like neutral oh Clearly I dug my nail into this, this shade here because <laughs> I haven't used this um, that much at all. I have used it from what it looks like, but I don't remember anything about it. This one could probably go into my chopping block series as well. But those are my pure palettes. And I forgot I had one palette from Storybook Cosmetics, the Little Briar Rose palette. This was in a project. I think my deck of panning at some point. Um, I don't remember much about it, but I guess I liked it enough to keep it, even though it's super bulky. I actually keep this on a display, like, not in my regular eyeshadow palette collection, so it doesn't bother me that much. But yeah, um, I have this. Okay, we're at the T section now, so here comes Too Faced. Uh, you've already seen I have several mini Too Faced palettes, but I have some more here. So I have the Just Peachy Mattes palette. This is an another older palette in my collection that I haven't used in a while but as the name suggests it's a all matte palette and I love the tones in here 
Um, I just don't reach for it that much. And there's dust in it. <laughs> um, I have to see how I feel about the formula of this one because now that I've tried so many different formulas, I don't remember if this is like my favorite one. So again, this one needs to be used some more. Does it still smell? Yeah, it still smells like peaches, which is nice. Um, then I have this um, Razzle Dazzle Berry eyeshadow palette. It looks like this. And this is one that I got at Ulta in the States because this one I think was like the 2D Fruity collection or something and it was an Ulta exclusive so that's how I have this one because I went to Ulta and I really like the color story of this and this shade is beautiful this like very creamy metallic shade I really like this palette if I remember correctly and it does smell like berries which is fun so I have this one this one's one of my favorites from Too Faced the Sunset Stripped palette I have a video on this one I know it looks super basic and like every other <laughs> Too Faced palette but the formula is so good on these and I believe this is made in Italy yes this is one of the made in Italy ones it does have a very strong like perfume fragrance it literally smells like a perfume like someone that I know is wears um, it's supposed to be like a suntan lotion kind of smell I think anyway I really like this one I have the sweet peach palette this one's super old just checking if it still <laughs> smells good and it does so this one, um, of course, another peach theme from Too Faced, but there's more variety in this one. It's not just a matte palette, obviously. There's even like purples in here and some kind of greenish tones. Um, again, don't remember this one being my favorite of the Too Faced palettes, but I'll have to revisit. And this one is made in USA. And here is the oldest palette in my collection, the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. This, um, I've said before, it's the oldest palette in my collection, but I didn't buy this like when it first released because I did, wasn't into makeup at that time. So I have the version, I think the first version was like bulkier and didn't have the shade names, but this is the newer one, I guess. Um, I don't even know if you can still get this palette, but I actually really like this palette. Every time I use it, I like the look that I come up with, even though it's very basic. It just works. And I think that's why I like Too Faced. Like, even though they're basic, there's something, like, about the formula and the tones that is just, like, it gives a good look every time. So, yeah, I'm very happy to own all of these. And this one still smells chocolatey, which is fun. And I've also used this shade as a highlighter and it was really nice. So yeah, this was in my whole, what was it called? Like a whole face or a full face project pan or something. This was in there. So it did get a lot of use at one point, but then I put it back in my collection. I also have this. <laughs> This is a blast from the past. The best year ever, 2018. Oh my god. It's already been that long. Um, this is what that one looks like. This was obviously a holiday release. It came with a like a a planner. Which I don't know. Oh, I know where it is. I actually remember thinking it was super cute. I should pull it back out and see if I can still use it. I don't remember if there were dates on it though but yeah I like this palette and it has a highlighter blush and bronzer and the bronzer is actually chocolate soleil which is their like you know fan favorite or whatever so I'm keeping this one um and it does have a nice variety of colors too I feel so even though it says 2018 
like I don't I don't really care. I'm still gonna use it. <laughs> I feel like most people would probably declare that by now, but not me. And I have the Natural Love Palette. This is another old palette. I remember getting this. Okay, I just had to change my memory card, so <laughs> this is definitely gonna be a long video. Um, but as I was saying, yeah, I was super excited to get this one, the Too Faced Natural Love Palette. I got it during, I think like my first Sephora VIB sale. So yeah, it has a special memory. Um, I don't remember how I feel about the formula of this one. This could be in my chopping block series. And looking at this shade is a little concerning because there's like beads of something on it. <laughs> I don't know. This is quite old, but it could still be nice. It doesn't smell like anything, so yeah. That's my natural love palette. Uh, let's move on to Tarte. So first I'll just show you this. This was a holiday release. I don't know what it was called, but I like this packaging. This is like a big bulky box though that I keep on display. And there's eyeshadows on this side and face products there. In here there was, um, I think an eyeliner, a mascara, and a lip product, I'm pretty sure. But I've since like put them with the rest of my collection. Um, but yeah, I rarely reach for this. It is in my inventory, so it could get pulled at any time. And I do remember liking it even the eyeshadows. But this is like one of the first things I ever bought myself at Sephora. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe I've since moved on, but again, another one I'll have to use some more of. Then I have the Tardis Pro, the original one. Um, it looks like this. I haven't used this much, to be honest. Although I like the layout of it because I like how each row is like a look on its own. So you have all mattes here and then these are the shimmers. So again, would love to get more use on this. It smells good. So it has that like tart cocoa smell, whatever that's supposed to be. Um, then I have the High Tides and Good Vibes palette. And when I pull this out, I notice something weird in, do you see that like residue? That's like not on the surface. It's like underneath. I don't know what that is. Um, but it makes me sad because now it's not as cute. <laughs> but I don't know about the longevity of this. Maybe something's weird about it. But this palette is quite fun. It has some glitters though inside, so I'll have to see if I would still use those on my eye. I have used this palette before and I really liked the look. It's just been so long that I don't really remember <laughs> much about it. I just love the packaging. I don't know if I could ever get rid of it. I also have the Tartlet in Bloom. I have actually never used this palette. I bought it, or maybe I, I don't know, it looks like I might have used it, but I don't remember using it. Anyway, I got this, I think I got this at like a very good discount, like 50% off probably, because this was already like an old palette when I first started getting into makeup, so <laughs> it's quite old. I'd have to see if I still like this one. And then I have the two palettes that came out this past holiday because I couldn't resist ha seeing something different from Tarte. So this one looks like this. This is the Glamour palette and I just love that there's different varieties of colors in here. And the formula looks super nice and shiny and I heard it's really nice. I think they've uh, improved on their formula over the years as well. And then this one is the Gilded. 
This is more like a, ow, I pinched my finger. <laughs> a more basic color story, but I still think it's kind of unique for Tarte. Like the pinks and the gold, I don't know. It's just something's a little different about it and I'm excited to use these two palettes. I think, yeah, that was it for Tarte. For some reason I thought I had more Tarte palettes, but I don't. Um, so let's keep moving. Okay, we're almost done. We're at the use. So, of course, I have my Urban Decay stack here. <laughs> So I have the Urban Decay and Jean-Michel Jean Basquiat collab, uh, if I can open this. This feels so nice by the way, it's like a canvas painting. It looks like this, it's those grungy tones that I like so much and I really actually like this palette. I know when, I don't feel like this collab got great reviews, I think most people just didn't know who Jean-Michel Basquiat was um, because he was like famous in the 80s, right? And so the young kids <laughs> didn't know him. But I love this. I feel like it's so well made and yeah, I'm happy that I have this. Plus it's fun on the back. There's like a little spot where you can actually hang this on your wall as a painting, which I thought was really cool. I also have the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette and I'm ashamed to say I still have not used this one. I don't know why because I love the colors. I just really need to get around to it because it's getting older in my collection now. The Naked Heat palette, which I really like. It's those warm reddish like leaning red tones that I really like. I know it's not like the most popular anymore, but I still love the reddish browns on my eyes anyway. Um, I also have the Urban Decay and Robin Eisenberg collab. This is my newest Urban Decay palette. I got it on sale and I just couldn't resist because I feel like it's something different for Urban Decay. And I really just like these shades together and these like pinkish purple tones. I feel like it could be really fun. And it's like a one and done palette for me because it has a matte cream shade. So yeah, I'm excited about this one. <clears throat> I also have the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. This one could go in my chopping block series because I've used this a few times and I think I always expected more from it because people used to rave about this palette. I personally think this shade is not good at all. This purple shade, it's very patchy if I remember correctly. But I should try to use more of like this side of the palette and see how I feel. So another contender for my chopping block series. And then I have the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne collab. This is super old, but I think this is the best formula Urban Decay ever did. And I know the layout is, let's just be honest, it's hideous, <laughs> but um, the formula and the pigment in this palette is amazing. Like, I don't know. I love it, so I'm keeping it, even though it's super old. I don't even know if Kristen Leanne makes videos anymore. I, I was never like a subscriber, I just really wanted this palette and I got it on sale, so that was fun. <laughs> um, I have three Violet Voss palettes, which two came from BoxyCharm. This one, the Violet Voss Essentials. This was in my Pan Those Eyeshadows project for this shade Dusty Rose. And I ended up really liking the palette as a whole, especially like a look I did. I think it was with these four shades, was just really pretty. So keeping this one. 
This one I haven't used yet, the All of You Forever. It looks like this. I haven't heard the best reviews about this one, so another one that could be going in my chopping box series, but I really like the shades in here. I like the green and the mauve tones together, so we'll see about this one. And this one, I'm pretty sure I bought myself from Sephora, probably on sale, and I love this palette. This is the Coral Crush palette. It's a very like monochromatic palette. It is called the Coral Crush, but I love this palette. I have a look, well a video I guess that I use this palette and it's one of my favorite looks I ever did. And I love, there's the mustardy yellow that I love. So yeah, definitely keeping this one. And then, okay. I realized filming this video, I did not have my Nomad palettes in my inventory. So I totally skipped over these. So that was good to find out. So I have the Nomad Hudson Valley palette. I have a video on this one. Love this color story, especially in like September, October, November. So fall, basically. <laughs> um, I would love to break this out again. It's just so, I mean, it's obviously meant to be a fall palette. I just love the theme of this and yeah, it's really cute. And then this one I've never used. Um, it's still in the box. And unfortunately, I think this has been discontinued. It was limited edition, I guess. This is the Haunted Europe palette and it has that lenticular thing. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> and this one, another like grungy fall palette in my opinion. This was on sale when I was going to pick up the Hudson Valley palette so I just added it to cart <laughs> and I'm very happy that I did. I've mentioned this in another video, I, well the video that I used the Nomad Hudson Valley palette that Tara Babies says that this is one of her favorite palettes in her whole collection. And if you know her, <laughs> you might know. Um, I'm pretty sure she owns like every piece of makeup that ever existed. So yeah, that must mean a lot. So I'm very happy that I got this one before it disappeared. And then I just have one little palette here that I forgot to mention in my like one-off palettes, the Winky Lux Kitten palette. This was in my last Shop My Stash, but I didn't get around to using it. So this could go in my Chopping Box series again because I remember one time using this palette and I did not like the colors together. Like if I used it again, I don't know. I don't know if I'd mix like this side with the neutrals. It just looked kind of weird on my skin tone, I suppose. But the packaging is just so cute. There's kittens on it. <laughs> so again, not sure if I'll keep this one around, but I have it for now. And that was everything. So I hope you liked this video. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of palettes, obviously. If there's anything you would like to see more of, like, or you want to see, I don't know. I'm not really like that great at doing my eyeshadow, but if you want to see looks with any of these palettes, I could make that happen. Um, yeah, but overall, I'm just, I don't know. I'm really happy with my collection. I think it could be um, curated a bit more. There's a lot of things, like I said, I don't even know if I still like. So I'll just have to keep testing some more of these. And I'm always buying new eyeshadow palettes, so <laughs> my collection will keep evolving. But I'm going to try and organize this and I guess I'll show you what it looks like in my drawers. Okay, so here is what... <laughs> this is looking like now. I know it doesn't look that organized, but 
I had a lot of issues trying to fit everything in here, but at least now it's grouped by brand and I know what all these things are now. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So here's all my ColourPop palettes, um, Tarte, Urban Decay, Violet Voss, Blend Bunny. I tried to put the big palettes at the back so that um, they wouldn't block the smaller palettes, but in the end, I kind of just had to fit everything in there. And yeah, I just don't have enough room, to be honest, for all these palettes. Over here is the second drawer. This one looks better. <laughs> Um, I have my Too Faced, my ABH, which are kind of spread out here because I have so many. All my Odin's Eye are here. Um, Patrick Ta, Huda, Natasha Denona. Yeah, and my big Pat McGrath Labs and my Juvia's Place and Glam Light are back there. So... I don't mind this because again, I know what everything is now and because it's grouped by brand, like I'll know what it is by looking at it. So, and actually my new makeup drawer, there's more room in here now because I put a lot of the palettes that were in here in those other drawers. So this can be organized a bit better too, or <laughs> there's room to grow. So yeah. That's everything for this video. I think it's been long enough. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!